any words to Putin? <laughs> Hi, I'm Fenton from Vans Without Borders. We're a humanitarian group from the UK delivering vital aid, helping the vulnerable people of Ukraine. And this is Samantha, our translator, Edic, and Lee. Okay, <laughs> Winter's not gonna stop us, mate. <laughs> Just come over the border at the end of December to deliver some vital aid to the Ukrainian people. Our aim for this trip is to deliver lots of medical supplies and also warm kits such as sleeping bags and blankets. Due to the nature of this part of the world, it is gonna get very cold soon. Initially went on the mission without Jack because he wasn't able to make it, unfortunately. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Everyone obviously has their own commitments at home, but I thought it was definitely essential that we went there um, just before, or well, sorry, just after Christmas to give them their warm kit and medicine that they need to help them during the winter. The harsh reality of it is if you don't have the correct kit, you will go man down. It's no other simple way of saying it, especially at the moment with no electricity, there's a lot of blackouts, power outages, that means not a lot of running water, no heating. So yeah, this kit is definitely essential. Quite nerve wracking to lead the team. I've never done it before. And obviously the two team members that I had out had never gone to Ukraine before at all. So that had its own risks as well. So yeah, definitely kept in touch with Jack, keeping up to date with all the intelligence that we have, where's safe to go, where's not to safe to go. Hopefully didn't annoy him too much by constantly <laughs> calling him. See that water on the other side? That is where the Russians are. The roads are really, really bad. Potholes everywhere. Our translator, Edic, has hit one and he's busted his tire and he's also done his suspension at the back. It's not an ideal place to break down. It's clear skies, obviously. There's going to be threat of drones about, so got to try and sort this as quick as possible. Initially, we were going to go to Donetsk um, to help a village and also a hospital down there, but due to our intelligence telling us that it wasn't safe at the moment, we ended up going back to Kherson. Uh, due to our last trip being there, I mean, saw the devastation and the people are clearly really, really in need there as well. So yeah, we just made a, a slight diversion and headed to Kherson again. Right now we're in Kherson, we're handing out some food, crutches and sleeping bags. Practice your Ukrainian, say, but good laska. Very well. After our last trip to Kherson, where we, we got shelled, uh, I think cruise missile went over our head about 30 metres above. Initially, we all thought it was a jet, and then we realised when the impacts uh, started to happen that, yeah, we were getting shelled. So we got out of there pretty quickly, and one of our vehicles ended up the bridge giving way. One of their tyres popping. Luckily, me and Jack in the white van, we uh, stopped, saw them sort of limping down. Had to quickly get the tyre off. I don't think I'd ever change the tyre that quickly until that point. And then, yeah, got chased out of there. We got stalked by a drone as well for about 20, 25 minutes after the, the missiles landing. After the last trip, we made a few corrections. We made sure we didn't go close enough to where the Russians could see us across the river. We kept it to the tight corners, tight streets where they wouldn't necessarily be able to see us parked under the trees. We were in and out of there really, really quickly. We um, just went in with a bit more purpose, quick, in, out, done the job. All right, so we're in Kherson at the moment. And uh, this was a Russian position, as you can see. They were hanging up their boxes. This is, or was, sorry, a Russian tank, which has obviously been destroyed. And then this was a Russian's white armband, which he no longer needs, clearly. After we came back from Kherson, we ended up in Krivi Roy to uh, help the administration building over there to deliver sleeping bags, medical aid, uh, also some food. Um, ended up speaking to one of the commanders there, he's a very interesting bloke to talk to. Had uh, lots of information about the current invasion and also some, some other quite interesting bits that they've been getting up to. Uh, 
сьогоднішнього дня я перший заступник голови військової адміністрації Кривирського району Віталій Анатолій Шпак. З приводу того, що я думаю з приводу цієї війни, що я можу вам сказати, так це тільки те, що Російська Федерація, от, на мою думку, має намір от, знешкодити повністю весь український народ. От, другого от, обоснування і другого поняття цієї війни немає. От, що можна ще сказати з приводу бомбардування цивільного населення, так це те, що із першої, із першої відповіді от, виходить друга відповідь, що дійсно Російська Федерація не гребує нічим, вона не, не воює із нашими військовими, вона воює з нашими цивільним населенням. От, і дійсно вона не переймається тим, що гибнуть діти, що гибнуть от, наші матері, наші сестри, наші жінки. От, Займається дійсно геноцидом нашого українського народу. От. Якби я побачив Путіна, <хи> чесно скажу вам, я, я б йому нічого не сказав. Би. Я б його розірвав би на чотири частини. От. І тільки так. Тому я впевнений, що перемога буде за нами. От. Українці переможуть в цій війні непростій. От. Дякуємо всім міжнародним партнерам, всім благодійним організаціям, які здійснюють допомогу а от і підтримують наш народ, і підтримують як а, і е, з військової сторони, так і з цивільної сторони. Тому о, велике вам спасіба за те, що ви є, що ви допомагаєте нашому народу. Дякую. Слава Україні. Дякую Україні слава. The way I met Jack was I was sitting at home uh, one evening after a, a long shift. I worked for the NHS at the time as an ambulance driver. I was, I was scrolling through YouTube videos and a video of Jack popped up on YouTube. At this point as well, right at the start of the war, I'd sort of been looking at going into Ukraine anyway to help. Being in the British Army previously, having medical training as well, and also what I, I like to perceive as being a, a decent driver, I would hope I am anyway. I thought I could sort of bring these skills over. So I ended up contacting Jack via Instagram. Uh, after a lot of back and forth, I flew into Krakow. Jack then organized a bus to take me across the border. I then stayed in Lviv for a night and then, yeah, got a sh train straight down to Kyiv. From there, it sort of kept on going to how it is now. <laughs> so, just been told uh, we've come back to Kursk and the village that we were at last time. And when the cruise missile went over our heads, uh, another one landed just after injuring a lady. Don't think it was life-threatening injuries, but um, yeah, had some lacerations and stuff. And we spoke to some of the locals and they're also in need of doctors in these little villages as they have none at all. So, you know, without the medical care and also the professionals to uh, administer it, it's, you know, it's, it's quite a sad time for them. When we were back in Kherson in that village, when we got rocketed, we were talking to one of the locals and we found out that a, a gentleman had been hit, blown up and had passed away. I think moments like that going on with the way they're living now, you know, without the electricity, heating, lack of food, not being very clean at all. They don't have even a village doctor or anything, so they don't have anyone who's medically qualified. Being so close to the Russians as well, having to live their day-to-day -day life and then overcoming all the other issues as well. It's definitely pretty sad to, to hear those things. You know, she comes over and she hugs you, you know, bawling her eyes out and, you know, speaking Ukrainian, I understand a little bit, but not loads. You end up having this, as we call it, a babushka, crying in your arms. So, I think, yeah, definitely the saddest point for the trip. We're on our way back from Kherson at the moment. We delivered lots of essential medical aids and also lots of warm kit to the Ukrainian people. Uh, very proud of how the team uh, acted this time. We did very, very well, as you can see. A bit tired, a bit sleepy, but the Ukrainian people need the help and as long as they do, we'll keep coming here to help as much as we can. Slava what? Ukraine? <laughs> Rum Slava! <laughs> the original thought behind Lee jumping in the river was a passing thought as we were driving back from Kherson. It was getting dark, so it was definitely getting a bit colder. Oh, cold. It's already cold. <laughs> The whole idea behind it is a defiance against Putin. It's saying, look, we're Westerners, we're Brits, not used to this cold weather, but we'll get into a freezing lake the noon when it is below minus. January in Ukraine, 
below freezing and just ooh 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 you in baby It was more of a defiance thing for Putin, better morale for the soldiers. We sent it about to a few people and the response was pretty positive from uh, the Ukrainian people, so a bit of a uh, feel-good moment. Go in, go in, go in, go in, go in. Oh. Cold? My wallet's in my pocket! No! <laughs> <laughs> we love Ukraine. Get yourself warmed up, mate. <laughs>